I wonder how you're feeling at the start of a new year. As the clock hit midnight on Thursday night or Friday morning, depending on which way you see it, what was the overwhelming feeling? Was it relief at 2020 finally being over? Was it pride for having made it through what was a difficult year? Was it hope for the year ahead? Was it worry or fear about what might happen? Was it peace in knowing the one who holds your hand, even when everything else may seem unknown and uncertain? Perhaps if you're like me, it was probably a mix of all of those options, because the start of a new year can bring so many emotions. There's a natural sense to look back on all that has happened, but there's also a desire to look and plan ahead what will be different in the year to come. What is there to look forward to? What goals might we set for ourselves? What hopes might we want to see realised? If we were together in the church, I would ask if anyone had made any resolutions. And if you have, why not drop them in the comments? Maybe you'll inspire some of us to also make some plans or goals. You know, I always make some goals at the start of a year. Although if I'm honest, I rarely manage to keep them in any sort of conscious way beyond the first week of January. You know, this year, I probably hope to walk a little bit more each day. One of the things that I found really helpful in 2020 was to make sure I took my daily walk. I think that's something from 2020 I want to keep up. I want to read more. I want to make sure I spend time each day with the Lord. What about you? You know, one thing I've noticed that started to creep up a lot on my social media the last few days are different exercise challenges that people are signing up to, whether it's walking 50 miles in January, whether it's this challenge that I've seen some of my friends joining in with, which is an annual challenge that in 2021 they will walk the length of the UK, the 1,084 miles between John O'Groats and Land's End as they get out each day and do a little bit of walking. Now, if I'm honest, neither of those sound particularly appealing to me. I'm not signing up for either of them, but it has got me wondering about what journeys we will all travel this year. Where might God lead us in 2021? Today is Epiphany Sunday, a day where as a church we look at the story of the wise men. Now, it fits in well with what we have been doing in the last few weeks of our Christmas and Advent series where we take a closer look at some of the characters in the Nativity. And today in our final look at that scene, we will focus on the story of the Magi. The wise men who travel an incredible distance in search of the one born, they say to be king of the Jews. And as we have a closer look at Matthew's account this morning, let me ask you a couple of questions. What are you seeking this year? How far are you prepared to travel? And what might stop you seeing what God has revealed to you in the year ahead? Let's jump into scripture together. Now, some time has passed since the visit of the shepherds, which Geoffrey looked at for us last Sunday. And now Matthew tells us in his gospel that wise men from the east have travelled to Jerusalem, seeking the one who has been born to be king of the Jews. They've been following a star which they saw rise, and they've come to worship this newborn king. Now, we might know that there's lots of speculation around these visitors. Who are they? How many are they? Where have they come from? What exactly were they following? But there are some things that we can be sure of. They've come a very long way. And they would be seen to be outside of the scope of how the Old Testament understood God's people. They're not Jewish, but Gentiles. 
who had been prompted to follow a star. They've travelled to see what might have come to pass. Geoffrey showed us last week the shepherds were considered outcasts and outsiders. And this second group of recorded visitors to see Jesus are about as far away from who would have been expected as possible. But as Daniel read from us from Ephesians chapter 3, in the birth of Jesus, in the mysteries revealed in the Gospels, we see that God's grace, his love, his gifts are given to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. We are all fellow heirs, Paul wrote, members together of the same body, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus revealed in the Gospel. The shepherds were told by the angel to go and see. And now we have wise men from faraway lands prompted by the rising of a star to go on their own much longer journey towards the one born in Bethlehem who changes everything. Today, all of us too are invited to come and see, go and keep going, moving ever closer towards the one who brings comfort, hope, peace, joy and love this year and in every day that is to come. Now, these wise men have come from faraway lands seeking a newborn king. They are clearly in some way familiar with some of the teaching of the Old Testament and perhaps combined with their other beliefs and superstitions, they found their way to a palace. After all, if we were looking for a new king, that would be a highly sensible place to, to head towards. However, when they arrive at Herod's palace, they are met with confusion. Herod the king is troubled by the news, as is all of Jerusalem, for they know nothing of this newborn king. Herod turns to the chief priests, to the scribes, the leader of God's people, for answers of where this promised Messiah, the Christ, is to be born. And in a detail which has troubled me all of Advent, the priests and leaders of God's people know exactly where the promised one is to be born. They tell Herod the answer lies in Micah 5. And they send the wise men on to Bethlehem in order to find the one who Micah said will produce the one who would be the ruler, the shepherd of God's people. These chief priests and scribes knew the answers. They've dedicated their lives to leading God's people. They know the prophecies, the scriptures, but they had zero interest in joining the wise men in their search. We'll think about that more in a moment or two. But Herod is then the one who goes to the wise men, who tells them the postcode they need for their satnav and sends them out on the journey, the short journey between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, asking the wise men to return with word of where Herod too may find the child so that he might worship the newborn king. Of course, we know that that is not Herod's desire. He did not wish to worship but to eliminate and wipe out any potential, every threat to his power over Israel. Now Matthew tells us as the wise men set out on their journey, they once more see the star and they rejoice exceedingly with great joy. They follow the star once more to the house where Mary is with Jesus and on entering in they fall down and worship presenting Jesus with precious gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And upon resting, we are told they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod's palace, but instead to return by a different way to their own country. It's an incredible story of astonishing commitment to a journey. But what might God want to say to us through this bit of a tag on at the end of the Christmas story. What might God want to say to us on the first Sunday of a new year about what might lie ahead? I wonder where we are like the wise men. What are you pursuing in 2021? What are you journeying towards? What are you seeking this year? The Magi had travelled far 
Perhaps some scholars say as far as Babylon, some 900 miles away, they had set off in faith following a star. They must have faced opposition. People must have thought them misguided at best. And yet they kept on following, hoping to find this promised one. What are you fixing your eyes on at the start of a new year? How far are you willing to pursue Jesus that you might encounter him? How much opposition or rejection or mockery might you be willing to face in order to pursue Jesus? How much discomfort might we all face in going through in order to seek what Jesus' will and plan is for our lives? There's a danger sometimes, isn't there? We can start off with the best intentions. We're going to pray every day about this thing. But maybe we then grow weary of waiting and trusting. Or something else comes along that we then put all of our focus and attention into. Are we willing to take a journey that lasts months, that may lead to much discomfort, no doubt many blisters, in order to worship and find the one whom we're seeking after this year. Will you seek Jesus this year with all your heart, mind and strength and pursue him through the storms and the challenges that will inevitably come? In place of our desires and hopes and dreams and plans, will we each commit today to journey this year with God and towards where he is calling us to this year? But in being like the wise men and seeking Jesus, will we also learn from the mistake they make? You see, Matthew tells us they set out in pursuit of the promised one following a star. But upon getting to Jerusalem, they start to trust their assumptions in seeking the place where the king must be. They turn up at the palace. They followed a star for miles. And yet once they get 10 miles from Bethlehem, they don't keep traveling, but divert from the star to trust their ideas. What gives me the confidence to say that? Well, you see, once they leave Herod's palace, remember, they once more see the star. That means that they'd stopped seeing the star for a time, because when they see it again, they rejoice exceedingly with great joy, because that which has brought them thus far can be seen to lead them the last seven miles it is between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, away from the palace and instead towards the one born in a stable. When the road gets tough ahead, when we're not sure what we should turn to, will we look afresh to the one who guides us? Will we make scripture and prayer our guide and navigation systems through the uncertainty of the year to come? Will we trust God to take us from A to B rather than trusting him for the first steps and then resting on what we might think is best or our plans and preferences? See, God caused the star to rise, which led the wise men to start on, on their journey. But on reaching Jerusalem, they trusted their own assumptions and it almost wasted the journey thus far. Where might God surprise us this year? in the ways he leads us? What might he challenge in each of us and reveal to us in his word, in our prayers and the paths of the steps he lights for each of our feet? Are we ready this year to trust and obey? To walk with the one who promises to guide our each and every step? Are we fed up pursuing the wrong paths? In the pursuit of the wrong people to follow the plans that just leave us disappointed or frustrated or lacking? Will we each make 2021 the year we choose to trust more, to listen deeper, to step into freedom and purpose afresh? Will we fix our eyes on Jesus and follow him in every step that is to come? You see, in scripture, God promises us never to leave us nor forsake us. He speaks direction and purpose into each of our lives. Will we choose this year to listen to the one who calls us by name, who promises to stand with us, who even when everything else is going crazy and we're unsure, 
the one who is our solid rock and sure foundation, the one who never leaves us, but promises to walk with us. Will we follow, step out and obey and trust? What are you seeking this year? Would you find it in Jesus? But I also wonder where we might need a challenge to not be like the others in this story. And as I said earlier, this Advent and Christmas season, I found myself reflecting often on the priests and the scribes of the people who Herod calls upon in his time of confusion, when he wants to know where to send the wise men to. See, Herod assembles up the leaders of God's people to find out knowledge from them about where this promised Messiah is to be born in order that he might track this new king down. And the people of God, the chief priests, the top Bible experts know the answer. They've given their lives to study the scriptures and to lead God's people. And they know that Micah had prophesied that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. They know exactly where to tell Herod about where the wise men should journey on to. And yet they show no interest in joining the wise men and finding the Christ. They have all the head knowledge and none of the heart action. They know the right words to say and yet they don't respond with worship and praise. They're prepared to let these wise men travel on and encounter and worship Jesus. They're stuck with their knowledge in stone hearts. Imagine being an expert in scripture. Imagine knowing all the right answers but never being moved to experience the love and joy of Christ. Where might we be in danger of having all the head knowledge but none of the faith required to pursue and encounter Jesus? See, God isn't interested in any of us passing a Christianity exam. He doesn't want your head knowledge. He wants your heart. He doesn't want your 100% intellectual faith. He wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want you to be able to drop Bible verses with a click of the hand. He doesn't need the Christian phrases or the false piety. He wants you to start living your faith out, to step into freedom, to trust him with your todays and your tomorrows. Because Christianity was never supposed to be a theory that was learnt. It's not an equation to live a happy, successful life. It's not a language that is learned. It's about relationships. It's about freedom. It's about doing life as it was created to be done. It's about purpose and freedom, not regulations and restrictions. It's not about being a little bit more boring than everybody else. It's about living in the freedom that God created each of us to live in, in his love, in his plans and his purposes today and for all of eternity. You know, these chief priests and scribes have vexed me all Advent. How could they be content to know the answer and yet miss out on the one they'd waited their whole lives for? What got in the way? Was it fear of Herod? Were they too comfortable with their position of privilege as the leaders of God's people? Were they too busy creating systems about religion that they missed out on the going and seeing the promised one who God had told them would deliver them? This year, let's pursue relationship, not religion. Faith, not logic. Jesus, not a concept of some Christianity. A relationship with Jesus built upon freedom and not boredom. Jesus' way, whatever option the world seems to offer instead. Purity, not temptation. Worship and adoration, not false piety or judgment on the world. I don't know about you, but I'm desperate for a church to get real. For us to lead the way in the pursuit of Jesus and holiness, that we would walk and actually mean and declare what we sing in our songs. That we would want to be like Jesus, our Saviour, standing with those who feel hopeless and cut off and outcast. That we would believe that we actually carry the light of the world in our lives and we would want to share it with those around us. Believe me, if we figured out how to fix this COVID situation, we'd be desperate to share it. If we figured out the solution for world hunger, 
You want to bet you'd be telling everyone you know. And yet all of us carry the hope of the world, the promises of God's presence with us, where all of us maybe feel alone and confused. As Christians, we believe that God who holds the world in his hands walks with us. I'm fed up of Bible quoting Christianity that says all the right things but doesn't positively impact the world by living out what we claim to say. Jesus changes everything. And as followers of Jesus, we have within us what we need to impact the world. Well, this year, will we live in light of Jesus' love and share it with the world around us? 2021 can be faced with hope because Jesus wins and he never lets us down. Let's not know all the answers like these leaders of God's people that told Herod where to go, but not act upon it. Imagine telling God's people about prophecies and scriptures. You were waiting for the promised Messiah and then to be able to point someone in the right direction, but not want to go yourself. Would we be people that go and see and go and tell that we might lead others to join us in the way of purpose and freedom? Now, in seeking Jesus, we may all have to deal with some other Herods in our lives. Now, I don't mean it in the sense of bloodthirsty kings who are trying to take everyone out around them. But our, in each of our lives, there are things, and maybe even people, who stop us pursuing God's best for our lives. What other idols or kings do we give our hearts to? We may sing and say Jesus is on the throne of our hearts, but what other altars do we give homage at? What do our goals for 2021 reveal about the desires of our hearts? Are we more interested in growing our bank balance, our titles, or our relationship with Jesus? Are we looking for success in relationships or work or in power rather than starting first with the God who calls us and knows us by name? What might we need to squash or step away from in order to know Jesus more and to step into his ways for our 2021? What are we so desperately holding on to that is stopping us from opening our hands to what God might want to put in them this year? Where do we need to stop trusting our desires, our plans, our ideas and go with what God is saying and asking of us instead? Why settle any more for good when we can have God instead? Why settle for what's available now when God calls us to live in light of all of eternity? So this year, what are we pursuing? What are you seeking? Would you find it in Jesus, the one who came close, who got involved in the mess that we might know his love and redemption and purposes in every day that is to come? In the challenges that we each will face, what will you fix your eyes upon? Whose voice will you choose to listen to? Will 2021 be a year your faith grows in new ways? Will you go deeper in your walk with Jesus? Will you step further into purpose and the call of God upon your life? Will you choose to pursue him and turn your back on the world? Will we choose to journey together as a church family? As we seek to respond in obedience and in faith to where God will lead us as a church and what his love means for us as we seek to share it with our communities and those around us. In a world of confusion and uncertainty, will we choose to trust the one who is faithful and isn't finished with us yet? The wise men responded to the star and set out on a long and uncertain journey to seek the one who was to be the king of the Jews. In the year ahead, will we each respond to Jesus' invitation to come to get involved, to find in Jesus the one who satisfies, the one who still gifts us his love, peace, joy, hope, purpose and freedom today and in every day to come. What are you seeking this year? How far are you willing to go? And will you bow down and worship the one who has come close?